One in six new RVs are in for service and are unusable. I've been telling y'all that these pandemic RVs are being pushed out and they're total junk. What's up, live viewers? How's everybody doing today? It's hump day. All right. With new motorhomes averaging around, you know, a $200,000 mark. Do you like paying for that home on wheels that sits in the shop or back at the manufacturers? Well, we'll talk about that a little bit more, so stick around. First, we have Anna and his adventures. That's right. She got the knock, but. It's not the knock that you are thinking of. Um, I honestly believe that they were looking for someone and they came to the wrong RV. Um, I believe they were looking to score something. <laughs> <laughs> and they came to the wrong RD, RV. <laughs> and so um, I just... Uh, yeah. What the deal was is she got a knock and uh, she... Uh, her instinct was to yell out. <laughs> Who is it? Yeah. She found out that wasn't a good idea. We'll talk about that in a little bit here. But yeah, she uh, she kind of like peeked out and saw some guys standing out there. And uh, it wasn't an officer. She was staying at a casino at the time. It wasn't anybody from the casino or anything. It was just two guys. One was looking at his phone. And they were just kind of, she said they weren't uh, like menacing or anything. They didn't really freak her out. And uh, that's what she was. Uh, <laughs> so she is saying she went up to her uh, front seat and kind of looked at him in the, uh, in the side view mirror, she could see them, and she thinks they were just just lost, looking for a different <laughs> RV. Be a government checker out for sure and check it out. Uh, she makes a good point, too, later on in the video, uh, where she talks about the fact that, you know, I mentioned she made that little kind of faux pas, that little snafu, if you will, where instinctively she just shouted out, you know, who is it? And that 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 tells someone that there's a single female in there and she's alone, right? Because let's face it, if it was a couple, right? If it's a couple, the man would be the one to go investigate. Yeah, yeah, yes, I'm talking that way, but we all know that's that's exactly the truth. Oh no, <laughs> no, honey, <laughs> you stay in bed there, Mister. Let me let me get up here and go out and check and see who's beating on the door. No, it's the guy, right? So if you uh. <laughs> instinctively it's the female it goes they're going to assume that that you're there alone because the man would come to the door so you know just something to keep in mind and we talk about other things to do we've talked about before you know put a, a a big a big leash out hanging on your door handle or something outside your door to make it look like you have a big dog um put a a pair of go to the goodwill or something and go buy a big old <laughs> size 12 or 14 work boot and put some dirty old work boots out there and make it look like there's a guy inside all kinds of stuff that you ladies can do if you uh, want to make it appear as if you're not alone you know put two lawn chairs out instead of just one just simple little things like that but yeah very good stuff uh interesting little little video so go over and check out it anna from anna's adventures All right, what we got going on next? We got Bree. That's right, Bree from uh, T G I F. She uh, <laughs> she does oysters and waterfalls. <laughs> I call Bree the waterfall queen. She just loves herself some waterfalls, man. But uh, yeah, she uh, she got herself into a little a little challenge this week. So. Happy Friday. Uh, I somehow managed to agree to um, Pizza Friday challenge. So I'm, I'm in the greenhouse looking for ingredients. What do you put on oyster pizza? <laughs> what do you put on oyster pizza? <laughs> yeah, cool little video though. She is uh, out and about. She actually does go get some oysters. Uh, but yeah, pretty cool video. So go over and check out Bree. Over there at TGIF. All right. Uh, and yes, yes, you know how I do. I will be putting links to this video and all the videos I am uh, talking about in this here little update. 
Make it easy on you. Make it easy on you. All right. Uh, Van Vita Travels, Paula. Uh, she takes us around and she shows us Horse Thief Canyon over there in, in Canada. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. Nice little spot. It is. It is very cool. Nice little video. A little quick one. Very well done, though. Worth a watch. Worth a watch, in my opinion. And then we have uh, Charlie Grace. Charlie Grace, she talks about uh, van life meetups. Uh, she talks about one in particular, and that would be uh, Vanarchy. She talks about that. It's a short little screen, not a long screen, you know, not like my hour and a half one. <laughs> it's a nice little short to the point live stream. She has a guest, and they talk about it and all the, the little adventures and everything you can do. They give you the little rundown on Vanarchy. So go over and check that out if you are a vanner. Or if you're interested in, in what's going on. Uh, what else we got? We got line screw, line screw one. Uh, what is Andrew up to? Andrew, he's in Iceland. So if you want to see uh, what that's all about, he was giving us little hints and making us guess and uh, all this other stuff. But yeah, he finally landed. He's in Iceland. So go over and check out uh, line screw one's adventures. And uh, let's see, Bunny, Bunny plays here. She takes us to the oldest historic fish hatchery in the Rockies region. I will say it's pretty cool to watch them for a little bit though, because the longer that you sit here, the more that you see the activity. And you'll see that somebody will jump up out of the water and then another one will jump up out of the water and then it'll just go back to normal again. And then it happens again and again. <laughs> so take your time here. Just really observe them. They're very fascinating, but there's more. There's definitely more here. So let's get a few more views and then we're gonna go up to the visitor center. Yeah. Okay, so now that we- There we go. Go over to check out Bunny. Bunny, I mean, again, she goes to some places, and she might even be some places, not that this one was one, but she might even go some places that uh, we've seen before uh, through the eyes of some other RVers. But Bunny, she just doesn't show us. She tells us. She does a little research. She tells us all about the history of things, and she does a very good job, in my opinion, and I think she's worth a watch. I enjoy her, and I think you will, too. So go over and check out Bunny from Bunny plays here all right moving right along montana dana that's right good old montana dana she uh she says us a little behind the scenes of the making of her video she made a video last video she it was a music video that she made very cool very cool i i highly suggest you go and check that out for sure but um yeah it's a very interesting video um music video very visual awesome stuff but anyway uh after i watched it i i asked her how long it took uh to get all those colors off of her phoenix try and like fling them out from the ashes i'm a phoenix can you do it from like right here i don't care if it gets on me <laughs> famous last words <laughs> really? I don't care if it gets on me. You can have a little tie dye shit. It's so like chalky. <laughs> From the ashes, I'm a phoenix. Phoenix reinvented. Your full arm is in there. <laughs> Your full arm. <laughs> Very cool stuff, though. Very cool. <laughs> it's a nice video. It's a it's a good video. The music video is awesome too. But yeah, it's a really good video. Uh, it's not just that. It's, there's some other stuff. And it's all done in the funny, entertaining way that I appreciate Dana for. I think she's awesome. I, she's a hoot. She puts a lot of effort and a lot of talent goes into her video. So check out this video and definitely go over and check out that music video. Um, after it's, after it's If you watch this one that I'm talking about, and there will be a link below. At the end, she does put a link to uh, the music video. And it's very, very well done. Very cool. Uh, Dana really shows uh, how creative she she truly is with the uh, with her music and then making the video. And um, I mean, she does all this stuff. And this this uh, video here, where it's all behind the scenes, her and her brother are running around doing fun things. But yeah, it shows about uh, you know making all that chalk dust and stuff. And then she does by herself. She's flinging it all over the place. And it's really cool. It's really visual. Um, it's a good song too. 
And but yeah, again, <laughs> I've seen all that shit flying, and I asked her <laughs> how long did it take to get all those colors up. But yeah, so it was fun to see the behind the scenes, and yeah, all the uh, <laughs> all the stuff that goes into it to make that final final product. I think you'll find it interesting. Uh, I know I did. Okay, it's time for the main event. That's right, the the main story, the feature story, endless RVing. Uh, now, they talk about a few articles uh, relating to the RV industry. And uh, one of the articles is how one in six new RV owners have rigs that are out of service, unusable, and still costing big bucks. This one is specifically October 8th, 2022. The headline is one in six RVs out of action waiting for repairs. Now, this article was based on a survey about 1,200 readers responded to. They had put out a survey mm -hmm. a couple weeks before. And the question was, is your RV currently down? Not is your, has your RV been in repairs? Like, is it in repair and you can't use it? And out of those 1,200 readers, one out of every six said that they, currently their RV is down and cannot be used. And that, again, that's not saying their RV like was repaired. Right. It's not in use. So one out of six. So for you mathematicians out there, <laughs> that's a pretty decent percentage. It's almost 17%, which is a pretty poor showing. And some might be saying, well, yes, RVs are rolling earthquakes down the road and you know, these things shake apart. Yeah. And that, that, to us, that's really kind of an excuse. That's right. It is an excuse. It is an excuse, damn it. <laughs> Now, I've been sharing stories of uh, things just like this, right? You know, remember a little while ago, I talked about that one story with uh, the people that were waiting two years. It's been two years. They just went to the shop and they're like, oh, well, we don't have the flooring because this is a, this is a, a 2020. <laughs> it's 2022. We don't have that flooring anymore. Your garbage is obsolete. So they've been waiting two years and still don't have their flooring issues resolved. And let us not forget our buddies from Dreaming Out Loud RVing. They had that big stress crack. They had to go out and buy a new RV, another RV, not a new RV, but a, a, they went, had to go out and buy another RV to live in. So, uh, you know, while theirs was back at the manufacturer getting repaired. I think it's horse shit. So, yeah, oh, just sure. Just, just take it back to the manufacturer. It's not a big deal. It's not a problem, right? They're going to take care of it for you. You don't even have to pay for that, right? Because it's the manufacturer stuff. All warranty work. Yeah. Well, now you're paying one or two hundred thousand dollars for something that you can't even use. Now, let's not forget the pain for don't stop just because you don't physically have the damn thing. I think it's insane. These things should go out ready to go and last more than six damn months, in my opinion. I know. Here we go. That's why I buy used, never buy new. Well, guess what? These pieces of shit are the future used RVs that you will be buying. That's right. After people spend far too much for something that is in the shop seven months out of the year, they're going to offload these fucking lemons to you. That means that you used buyers will be looking at these models. That's right. <laughs> these great deals. And you're going to be taking on the headaches and the repairs. So go ahead. Buy used. New, used, doesn't matter. You're still getting fucked. When you buy a new house uh, for about the same price as some of these motorhomes. Yeah, exactly. These things are pricey now. How often do you have to take it back to the manufacturer for months to get fixed? Oh, that's right. Yeah, you don't do that, do you? How many times does the roof leak, the slide stop working, and the transmission fall out? or cabinets fall off the wall of your brand new house. Well, even if you do start throwing these obscure fucking examples of, oh, it's the same. Well, guess what? Even if the buying experience is the same for a house and an RV, that's still not good because RVing is supposed to be so much better. Not the same. I said it a thousand times. These pandemic RVs are total junk. They're pushing these things out with inferior parts to meet the high demand. The theory is, eh, just get them out into the hands of the customers and shut them the fuck up. We'll deal with all the shitstorm later. Now, another thing that Izzy and MJ talked about was how RVs are not essential. Oh, yeah, this is really going to piss you off. That's what I'm good at, right? So, there are proposed regulations that will come down on the auto industry, okay? So, they're trying to uh, get a handle on all the, the, the shit that the car dealers do, all that shitty stuff that they do, you know? With the uh, 
the old bait and switch and, and, and all the little hidden fees and Hey, it's this much, this is a sticker. And then when you walk out of there, you wind up spending <laughs> $6,000 more than the sticker with all the hidden fees and bullshit. And then the fake advertising, Hey, we got a sale this price. And then when you walk in, it's not that price. Yeah. All that shit and more. Well, yeah, they're trying to make regulations to get a hand on all that garbage. Well, the RV industry, they say, no, 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 no. That doesn't apply to the RV industry. No, it doesn't apply to us. Why? Because RVs are not essential items. And it's true. They do have a point. Because, just think about it. If you go into a bank for a loan for a house, uh, you're more likely to get one. Same goes for a car. These things are deemed as essential needs. However, when you talk about things like boats and RVs, no, they're not. You need a house to live in. You need a place to get out of, you know, some shelter. You need a place to get out of the elements. You need a car. You need a car to get back and forth to work to go get food and get your other things. You don't need a boat or an RV. They are considered luxury items. They're add-ons. They're something that you don't need. It's something that you just want. Now, I'm not saying you can't get a loan for these items, but it's easier to get one for a house or a car. It's, it's not as easy to get one for an RV or a boat or these other little fun things, especially when you have less than stellar credit. So even though more and more people are living in RVs and consider them essential, you know, you may consider it essential, but, uh, oh yeah, uh, no, really, no one really gives a fuck, but you think because it's still a recreational vehicle. The point is that the RV industry still wants to be exempt from being able to do, you know, not being able to do all these underhanded things that the car dealers do. Yeah. Let that sink in for a minute. Keep that in mind. So as uh, all these regulations go to say to the car dealers, no, 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 no. You can't uh, scam people, in other words, and uh, do all those underhanded, un fucking shady bullshit. The RV industry says, come on, we're not essential this isn't an essential thing. We should still be able to uh, do all this underhanded shit. So, you know, you guys are going to get stiffed. So I think as we watch the auto industry go to the, <laughs> the shit with, uh, you know, all the high prices and the low inventory, I think the RV industry is going to follow. And then we have places like California that want to eliminate gas powered, well, everything. You know, it, it's, it's going to make everything turn into extremely expensive electric vehicles. And that's going to be the only option because once you get rid of all the gas, look, look, generator, you're not allowed to have a gas power generator. Go ahead. Go price out the alternatives to a, a gas power generator. They're expensive as shit. And even you look right now, uh, an electric car. Oh, there's factory incentives and there's government incentives. No, look at the government incentives. They ain't giving you no damn money to go buy an electric car. They don't give a shit. And even if you do get a, a thousand or two thousand knocked off, they're still twenty, thirty thousand dollars more than other cars. They're expensive as shit. So yeah, uh just just follow California's lead and uh, get rid of all the fossil fuels and go electric. Yeah. <laughs> I know I think it's funny. <laughs> That's the place <laughs> that you can't uh, run your AC in the summer because it's not enough power. I want you to go ahead and uh, get rid of your your <laughs> gas powered car so you can have one to plug in and, and needs charging all day so you can go fucking a hundred miles. Oh, what a ridiculous fucking state! But hey, whatever they do, <laughs> the rest of the country usually follows. Over here, we got the East Coast, California, which is New York. Those morons, they'll probably be the next ones. And where are you going to start jamming all those little plug-in power stations for cars in Manhattan? <laughs> what a ridiculous place. Oh, anyhow, I digress. So uh, basically, all I'm going to say is this. Enjoy your RV lifestyle while you can. You think RVs are expensive now? Wait until the ones with the 10-ton battery pack come out. <laughs> You think you got issues with your RV now? Wait until everything is run off of some little fucking computer chips. You got 20,000 computer chips running everything off a big old battery pack. Yeah. Remember how Ford has a, a bazillion fucking trucks set on a field because they don't have a little chip? Wait until you see <laughs> the fields, the amber waves of grace of grain will be the amber waves of RVs and vehicles. 
sitting waiting for batteries and chips to be made. But hey, you don't have to agree with me. That's never the point here. This is Blind Views, and that's the way I see it. What we do here is go back, 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 back.